Well, we're moving from one spectacular private garden to another, but this is a private garden with a difference. It belongs to all of us. I'm talking about Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's exquisite estate in Virginia, uh, one of the founding sites of American gardening. And joining me now is Peter Hatch, director of grounds and gardens at Monticello. And Peter has had the honor of serving as director of, or working at the gardens there for, since 1977. So a lifetime commitment to an in, remarkable piece of American history. Peter, welcome to Central Texas Gardener. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Tom. Uh, always great to talk to people who have their hands in history and hands in gardening at the same time. And uh, Jefferson's Garden uh, really kind of, in a way, was uh, an emblematic of his vision for the future of Americans uh, as a people invested in a particular place, and an agrarian and a rural people, too. That's a part of the, the legacy of Monticello. Yeah, I think Jefferson was a, an American gardener in a lot of ways, just as he was... Uh, he was a, a father of a lot of uh, American democracy. Um, uh, the gardens at Monticello were large, they were expansive, they were continental, uh, they were experimental. Uh, they were kind of an experimental laboratory and the vegetable garden, I often refer to it as a repository of an Ellis Island of new and unusual plants that were brought literally from around the world. Some 330 varieties of vegetables and 170 varieties of fruit. So. Um, uh, it was also kind of casual in a lot of ways that um, kind of broke from the traditions of the old world. So I think that um, it really began to define a, a, a certain kind, a very specific type of, uh, of who we are as Americans. And the garden itself, it was a revolutionary garden, but it also inspired a revolutionary cuisine in the kitchen at Monticello. Uh, from this uh, mass of unusual vegetables that were grown in the garden to um, being prepared in the, uh, in the kitchen for the table. Um, mm -hmm. New vegetables really from around the world. Jefferson was really very conscious of trying to create a new model of gardening, too, because I know he was a great student of the, gar the, the gardens of France and Britain, and he, he set out to do something really new and remarkable, didn't he? Well, he, he wrote one time that the greatest service which can be rendered any country is to add a useful plant to its culture. So um, he looked at plants as uh, really a vehicle for social change, for transforming uh, America into a, a, new type of, uh, a new type of land. And uh, Monticello really became, as I said, sort of a botanical laboratory for mm -hmm. new and unusual plants. And Jefferson himself was very much um, kind of a seedy missionary as he'd get unusual things and try them in his gardens and then uh, distribute them to some of the major plantsmen of the early 1800s. He set in and uh, set out to create this new style of gardening, uh, and it, and it was a new style, not just a new plant material that he was. Uh... Well, I think in terms of in terms of the ornamental landscape, Jefferson mm -hmm. was a great lover of the English landscape garden, uh, an informal garden. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he looked at the American garden as transferring kind of the concepts of this informal garden to the American forest. He said, in America, we can make gardens without expense. We have only to cut out the superabundant plants. Right. And he said that in Virginia, under the constant beaming, almost vertical sun of Virginia, shade is our Elysium, or our paradise. Mm -hmm. So he looked at using the, the native landscape and um, uh, kind of modifying it in minor ways to create sort of a real new American um, uh, ornamental landscape. And shade is our Elysium here in Texas, too, I'll have you know. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Now, uh, it, a remarkable legacy that really lives on uh, uh, his impact, uh, the impact of the gardens at Monticello uh, can be seen still in American gardening and, and the plants that we use. Uh, and I know that... Sure. Um, um, you know, Jefferson's legacy is profound. When he was president, he kept a, a chart of the first and last appearance of 37 vegetables. Uh, in the farmer's market of Washington, D.C. over the eight years of his uh, political <laughs> administration. And he actually went around and got seeds from foreign embassies and passed them out to local farmers. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Jefferson's legacy in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, vegetable cuisine, he was primarily a vegetarian, um, in terms of sustainable agriculture, um, in terms of experimentation and uh, uh, farmer's markets all these things that we're so uh, involved with today, we really kind of, uh, Jabber's kind of sort of set the foundation for a lot of these things we're so interested in. And when we speak of legacies, you've had this active hand in, in the, the grounds of Monticello themselves, uh, because the gardens weren't always kept up. They had kind of disappeared, hadn't they, for a long period of time. So you, there's been a, a tremendous effort to recreate and restore. 
you know, the flower gardens were put back in the 1940s by the Garden Club of Virginia. And when I came in 1977, I've been involved a lot with the, um, the fruit and the vegetable gardens and um, recreating Jefferson's eight acre um, um, kind of practical garden on the south side of the mountain. It's a really dramatic setting. It's a, the garden itself is a thousand foot long terrace that's literally hewed out of the side of the mountain with these um, panoramic views of the Virginia countryside. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, what one visitor called a hanging garden. Um, and it's also a, a profound microclimate because it faces to the southeast and captures this wealth of crop ripening sunshine and enables Jefferson to grow vegetables all winter long, but also to experiment with a lot of new hot weather vegetables, mm -hmm. things we take for granted today, but which were new at the time and which um, um, were really uh, um, absent in Virginia gardens around 1800. Yeah. Why is the, the legacy of gardening important? Why should we care? about the legacy of gardens. Well, I think we, we, look to, uh, we look to the past to learn about the future. And um, I think that if we don't learn from the past, then I think we might fail in the future as well. So I think um, um, history is also really fascinating. It's really fun. And I think there's so many lessons we can gain from, um, from studying Jefferson's efforts and his adventures in horticulture. And gardening was fun for Jefferson. He, um, he had a blast. Um, he, he, kept a diary. <laughs> he kept a diary of uh, when his peas were sowed and um, what color vines were putting on his ornamental arbors. So um, um, he reveled in multi-headed cabbages and uh, odd colored vegetables and other novelties of the vegetable world in a way that reflected almost this um, um, sort of wide-eyed curiosity about the natural world. And, and I think uh, in his latter years, his diaries were more full of uh, commentary about the garden and politics or culture. Yeah, and even we all know that he had far-ranging interest in those. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Even at the age of 83, he, um, he read about uh, six-foot-long cucumbers in a Cleveland, Ohio newspaper. And in Jeffersonian fashion, he wrote to the governor of Ohio and asked him for seeds. And he got the seeds and passed them around to his friends and, um, mm -hmm. and um, measured how long each one was. And uh, at one point, Jefferson wrote, although an old man, I am but a young gardener. And here he was, even at the age of 83, I think, very much playing um, this role of an old man but a young gardener. Well, gardening keeps us all young at heart, I believe. Uh -huh. Now, you have had a role in uh, transferring some of the legacy of Thomas Jefferson back to the, the grounds of the White House in Washington, D.C. Talk about that experience. Right. I think, um, you know, as I said, I think Jefferson's legacy is really profound. Um, Alice Waters prepared a meal at Monticello for um, 300 people last April. Uh, the White House chefs have come down to Monticello and kind of become inspired by the Jefferson legacy, and they've uh, uh, they've uh, reserved a special place in Michelle Obama's uh, kitchen garden at the White House for um, for Jefferson plants and seeds, and um, um, so I think Jefferson's uh, like I said legacy is profound. It's enduring. He was first in food, first in gardening, first in wine, and he's easily called America's first foodie in this mm -hmm. uh, trendy world of today. Well, and we're indebted to that foodiness. Now, he he was also uh, uh, you know we think about. Organic gardening is something new um, uh, in our time, but uh, very much he kept his eye on the, uh, the principles and ancient practices, really, of organic gardening, and that's something that... Yeah, Je you know, Jefferson was Secretary of State when he got a letter from his daughter Martha, and she complained about the insects ravaging her cabbage plants as fast <laughs> as she could set them out in the garden. Sounds and, like my radio show. <laughs> and Jefferson wrote back, Jefferson wrote back and said, well, this winter we're going to cover the, the entire garden with a heavy coating of manure. Uh, when plants are growing in healthy, rich soil, they will in turn, in Jefferson's words, uh, they will bid defiance to droughts and insects and all the, uh, all the maladies that uh, infect mm. us in a summer of gardening in Virginia. Bid defiance to, right. the, to the aphids and the chewing grasshoppers. Well, uh, it is absolute pleasure. Now, if people want to experience Monticello and see the handiwork, uh, it is something that they can do. Uh, either on the ground or through your fabulous book, A Rich Spot of Earth, which is uh, just a really, it's a beautiful book, beautifully photographed, and it's a genuine pleasure to be here. And and I take it folks can come any time of year, right, to Monticello? Oh, yeah, Monticello's open every day of the year except Christmas Day, and we also have a, a really marvelous website where you can order um, seeds and plants that uh, come from the gardens at Monticello and were once um, uh, cultivated by... Uh, the hands of Thomas Jefferson himself. Well, there you go. So thank you so much for being our guest again. Peter Hatch, Director of Grounds and Gardens at Monticello. It's been a genuine pleasure having a, you on Central Texas Gardener. 
Coming up next, it's our friend Daphne.